What's up, college football fans, quarterback fans? Welcome to another QB Spotlight video. If this is your first time tuning in to the QB Spotlight channel, we thank you sincerely. We know you have a bunch of different uh, quarterback or college football content channels that you could be watching. Uh, but this is the place that we talk all things quarterbacks. Just a big quarterback hub, specifically the college quarterback position. And we have current and former quarterbacks that come on. We have coaches, skill, skill uh, coaches that come on. We just talk all things quarterbacks. But with the season coming up, we're transitioning to a bit more actual content and previewing games. And our game previews are a little bit different than most. Uh, we just spend the majority of time talking about the quarterback position and anything related to the quarterback. So it's not a, a full game preview, if you will. But with that said, today we're talking about LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels. We're talking about Florida State quarterback Jordan Travis. And we're talking about the defenses they're going up against and, and, and what they need to do to have some success. A few keys, and, and they're kind of broad and basic, simple keys. But I want to talk in, in a bit more detail why I think those keys are important. So let's talk Jordan Travis first. Florida State, what does he need to do against LSU's defense? Well, first, let's talk about LSU's defense. They, they lost a lot of production. I think Bill Connolly had him rank 72nd or 70-something as far as returning production, according to his S&P Plus model that he has. But with that said, you can still expect LSU's defense to be pretty solid, as, as, as most years. They, 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 they use a transfer portal to replace some, some players that they lost. So you can expect them to have a good season. But with that said, this is the first game. And so even though they have brought good players in, they still have to gel together. So I think Florida State could potentially have the advantage of, hey, you're facing this defense that hasn't played together as a unit yet in week one as opposed to week six or seven. If you play them later in the season, they probably, they're probably have a, a bit more camaraderie going on, maybe a better feel for each other. But Florida State, Jordan Travis get to play in week one. I think that's an advantage, potentially. Maybe they come out and they just shut it down. You never know. But I think that's an advantage coming out. So I do think LSU's defense is going to be pretty good. I do think they're going to be pretty good in this game coming up. Even if they're not completely gelling together yet, I still think they're going to come out pretty good, especially with you know the experience they had playing Travis last year. They, they, they'll have some uh, a better idea of what he brings to the table. So let's talk about Jordan Travis. W what are some keys for him? I think there are two big keys. Uh, and one may sound a bit weird, but I think this the first key opens up the passing game. And I think key number one, Use your legs to set up the pass. I don't necessarily mean that in, in rushing ability or in rushing plays. Yeah, if, if, a, if the play is called for you to run, run. If you have to scramble and get out of the pocket, that's great. Do that. But with LSU's defense, uh, traditionally, they're usually pretty good against running quarterbacks, against dual-threat quarterbacks. They do a good job because they got so much speed. You know, He's probably not going to outrun Harold Perkins to the sideline, right? They, they have so much speed that they're going to be able to contain the quarterback. So I think you can use your legs to set up the pass, but not necessarily doing – a lot of rushing plays that makes sense so, so for example using your your legs to set up some bootlegs using your legs to to set up some some rollouts getting outside the perimeter where maybe your legs are causing the defensive backs to get out of place and that's going to open up the passing game for the simple fact you're rolling out right and now you have the threat of the run even though he's not running the threat is there and so now the defensive backs have that in their mind that could potentially open up some passing lanes. So I think that's number one right use your legs to set up the passing game number two and this may be the the, the the biggest key, I think, is, is I think he's got a lot of trust with his receivers. He, they return a lot of production, even though they, they lost him to the NFL. They lost Pittman to, where did he go, Penn State? Regardless, he let, they lost him to the transfer portal. Even though they, they, they have lost some quality receivers, they still return a bunch of production. They still return Johnny Wilson, who's their number one receiver. They, they have that transfer from Michigan State, which is last name, Coleman, I believe. So they still have some quality receivers right they, they, they still have a lot of production returning so you have that experience that Travis has with his receivers I say you use that as your advantage whether it's a go ball jump ball you're on the same page with them use that to your advantage as LSU's DBs are trying to play together for the first time maybe I'm wrong maybe LSU's DBs buck up like yo come on with it but with that said I think you do have a potential advantage if, if you're Jordan Travis and he had a good game last year right against LSU if you remember that was like his because he had such a good season last year, LSU really started off. Like, he started off from the very beginning of, of showing his improvement in the passing game. He was 20 of 33 for 200 and what, 60 yards passing, two TDs, only 31 yards rushing. That, that right there tells me he doesn't need to, to run a lot to beat LSU. Maybe I'm wrong, right? But potentially, I think, again, use your legs to set the passing game. But overall takeaway for Travis, similar recipe to last year. You're an experienced quarterback. You have camaraderie and you have a relationship and you have a lot of feel with your receiver. You're coming off a huge year. Don't try to do too much. Trust your receivers to make plays. 
LSU's defense is going to be pretty good. You're probably going to have to have some big plays from your receivers to win this game. It's going to be a close game down to the fourth quarter, I would imagine, right? So LSU's defense is, is, is still probably going to be pretty good even as they're gelling. But trust your receivers to make plays. Have your receivers go make plays. So if you're Jordan Travis, you play within the offense. Give your receivers a chance. If you need to run, you run. But I think your legs can set up the passing game. Okay, so that's Jordan Travis, LSU's defense. Let's talk about Jaden Daniels. But before we talk about Daniels, again, let's talk about Florida State's defense. It's like we talked about LSU's defense. Florida State's defense returns a lot of players, a lot of production. 94% of defensive production returns, according to Bill Colony's S&P+. I'm not entirely sure how he measures that. I know it has a lot to do with total tackles, and, and, and defensive backs play a big role in that as well as far as the production that comes back. But regardless, they return a lot of good players from a really good defense from last year. They, they, they were number one the ACC in limiting passing yards per game. I think it was 158, which in today's day and age of college football is fantastic. They, they gave up less than 20 points per game. So they're coming with a pretty good defense especially in the passing game, right? The only thing that they didn't really do is, is cause a lot of interceptions last year. They, they, they still came down with eight, but depending what you feel, your thoughts on interceptions, that may be kind of a, a lucky stat, depending on your on what you feel, right? But with that said, regardless, they have a lot of defensive players returning. They have a good passing defense. And so that right there could challenge Jaden Daniels. So, so with that said, what if you're Daniels, what are the keys to win the game? What are the keys to, to not, ha to, to not you know, fall in the same trap what happened last year? Well, I think, I think it's kind of opposite from Daniels and Travis. I think for Daniels, you use your legs. You use that to your advantage. They have really good DBs. They have a really good passing defense. And even though you have a lot of wealth in the receiver position and they're going to make plays this game, I still think you use your legs. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about focusing on the passing game. I mean, that, that, that's true, and that's crucial to, for LSU to maximize their potential. He, he needs to stay in the pocket more. He needs to deliver the ball downfield more, right? You don't want to leave too early, but in this game, I think the fact you, he, he, you're so, if you're Dan Daniels, you're so dangerous with, dangerous with your legs, you don't want to limit that ability. He had 114 yards last year, 100 and something yards last year rushing. And I think for them to to have the success, at least against Florida State, or at least set up more success against Florida State, I think you want to use your legs. I don't think it's a bad thing. With that said, too, you do want to take deep shots. You do, if you're Jaden Daniels, you don't want to dink and dunk the whole way, right? Like, like if you're Florida State, you, you're okay letting Daniels run some. I know I just said Daniels needs to run, but you're okay with that. You want to keep everything in front. You're Florida State, you know he's going to get his yards rushing. You know he's going to escape some tackles, escape some pressure. That's cool. That's fine. Keep him in front if you're Florida State. The one thing you don't want to do is start creeping in and relying you know, focusing too much on Daniels running because then with LSU's receivers from Malik Neighbors and everyone else, like they, they're, they're so talented at the receiver position, then it, then you have a deep shot, right? Then, then then you have the threat of giving up a deep ball. That's something that you, if you're listening to the LSU camp, Daniels has gotten better at doing, pushing the ball downfield, staying within the pocket. So if you're Daniels, you need to take some deep shots. The stat line from Daniels last year, if you just look at the box score, if you're a, a box score analyst, right, it doesn't look that bad. He was 25 of 34, 209 yards passing, two touchdowns. However, a lot of those yards came at the very end of the game. A lot of those yards came the last drive of the game, whenever they were, were almost tied, on, I guess, what, mixed, missed extra point and got blocked, whatever. So it's almost a deceiving stat line. There wasn't a lot of big plays until the very end of the game. And Daniels had a, did a good job running last year, but again, Florida State kept them in front. So if you're Daniels, we need to take some deep shots. Florida State knows he's going to run. He knows he's going to have some success. As long as they don't beat them deep, Florida State's in a good position. So overall takeaway for Daniels, don't sacrifice how dangerous your legs are just to show that you are an improved passer. I think you can do both. You can be an improved passer. You can stay in the pocket, push the ball downfield, and still use your legs as a dangerous weapon against Florida State and their talented secondary and their talented defense. So, again, those are my thoughts. Florida State, LSU, uh, let us know your thoughts. Who do you think is going to win? What other keys are important for the quarterback position and, and, and the quarterback matchup that you think could be important to this game? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're an LSU fan, Florida State fan, or just a college football fan in general, well, thanks for making it this long, but let us know in, your, in the comments below. What, what, what do you think Daniels needs to do? What do you think Jordan Travis needs to do? What are we missing? What didn't we say in this preview that should have been said, right? Let us know in the comments below. And sincerely, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking, all that YouTube stuff. It really does help us and continue to follow us along for the rest of the season. We'll see you next time. Peace.